Hi, this is David Cantu, the founder and CEO of the Coaster Challenge Network and the executive producer of the Coaster Challenge Podcast. On behalf of the entire Coaster Challenge podcast team, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you out there for your love and support these past two seasons. From our family to yours, we would want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is, the most listened to radio show on the planet even the other stations are tuned in to. Hi, I'm Ashlyn Hunter, manager of digital marketing at Carewind, and you're listening to the Coaster Challenge Podcast. Hi, I'm Grace Peacock, director of communications at Canada's Wonderland, and you are listening to the Coaster Challenge Podcast. Hi, this is Leah Cook Bloomhart from Holiday World and Splash Safari, and you're listening to the Coaster Challenge Podcast. Hey, this is Jeff Tucker from Knott's Berry Farm, and you're listening to the Coaster Challenge Podcast. Do you accept the coaster challenge? Yes, I accept the coaster challenge. Do you accept the coaster challenge? Mm-hmm. Coaster challenge podcast is here. It's time to face your fears. Get that theme park therapy and let us go through. Coaster ears. challenge podcast is here. Your fear can disappear. We know that theme park therapy can dry up all your tears. Do you accept the coaster challenge? Yes, I accept the coaster challenge. Do you accept the coaster challenge? We accept because you know we're not average. You're listening to the Coaster Challenge Podcast, a journey where people become fearful to fearless, all from riding roller coasters. So please secure your hats and glasses and keep your hands and arms inside the podcast. It's time to accept the Coaster Challenge with your host, Kim Dykes. Hello, everyone. This is Kim with the Coaster Challenge Podcast, and today I'm very excited to talk with my guest, I'm absolutely thrilled to sit down and speak with Lauren Cook Crosby, the Director of Theming and Entertainment at Holiday World Amusement Park in Santa Claus, Indiana. Thank you for taking the time out of your super busy schedule to join me and welcome to the podcast, Lauren. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm just delighted that you're here and I'm very eager to get started. While I had the chance to talk with you briefly at Hollywood Nights, we've never gotten the chance to know each other well. Will you please Mm -hmm. share a few things about yourself with our audience? Oh, my goodness. So, as you already said, uh, work at Holiday World. I basically have worked at Holiday World all my life because uh, maybe, as you may have figured out by the cook last name, uh, my father owned and ran Holiday World before me. So I've literally born and raised at Holiday World. Um, So yeah, and now I'm back here working and I have my own family and it's very exciting because I have a a two and a four-year-old and I get to experience the park now through their eyes. And I don't know, it's just like a whole like new, like I guess like era Mm -hmm. of experiencing the Holiday World. You know, I've done it as a kid and as a teenager, as an adult, and now I get to see it through my kid's eyes. So that's awesome. I didn't know that you had children. Now, do you have them involved with the park like you were as a child? Um, We try. Uh, It's been hard, you know, because the last two years were what they were with COVID. Um, But this year, my kids are like super aware of what Holiday World is and that mom and dad both work there. That's another fun fact is that my husband also works here. He's actually uh, the director of games. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I know. World I didn't know that either. Smaller and smaller. <laughs> um, but yeah, pretty. Now, this summer, it's like pretty much every day. Mom, Dad, is Holiday World open? Can we go? Can we go ride some rides? Can we go like do this, do that? So we've been trying to, you know, Mom and Dad have, still have to work during mm-hmm. the day, but we've been trying to, you know, get them over during the evening and let them play and have some fun. We just do it in little bits and pieces here and there, which may not be the way they want to do it, but it makes it easier for mom and dad. Well, it's wonderful that they have that enthusiasm at such a young age. (laughs) Yeah. As they get older. Yeah. If it stays, they get older, they're going to have a passion for it just like you do. Okay. So the way our interview works, the beginning of the interview is kind of what we call like the roller coaster time traveler. We're going to go back in time talk about you know your early experience with coasters and that sort of thing and then Mm -hmm. we'll when we transition to the second part of the interview that will be 
more questions that pertain to you in the here and now in the year 2022. Okay. So that's the way our interview is going to work. Awesome. So beginning with our time traveling, our first question is what was your very first coaster that you remember riding? So yeah, I can't, I'm sure there was probably something smaller I went on before this, but what vividly sticks out in my mind as what I consider my first big girl coaster was Alpengeist at Busch Gardens, Williamsburg. Wow. <laughs> I was expecting you to say something at Holiday World. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Do you know, how old were you when you wrote Alpengeist? Oh my goodness. Oh. I was pretty young. I'm, from what I recall, like I was like right there, like at the height requirement. So I was pretty young. Oh my goodness. I just got to ride Alpen guys for the first time last year and uh, got to rewrite it when I went back down, back down to Bush Gardens, Williamsburg this year, but mm -hmm. I didn't ride my first big kid coaster. <laughs> so I was like 18 years old. So, I mean, growing <laughs> up with my dad, who he was like yeah. basically any family trip was also like centered around what theme park or amusement park can we go to so that way my dad could see how other people are doing it and what ideas right. can we take from them and bring back home so most of my most of our family vacations growing up were to some other theme or amusement park that's something I didn't know because I knew you all were very <laughs> you know focused around holiday world I didn't realize that you all Oh, my dad, my dad well. loved to get ideas from other parks. I mean, all the best ideas are stolen. Absolutely. I'm that way. <laughs> or I'm, stolen. A, I'm that way. I'm a school teacher. That's my job. And, you know, if I see, if I've got a difficult student that's mm -hmm. not doing for me, but I see that they are doing whatever another teacher has to do all day, every day, you know, oh, I'm going to go talk to that teacher and say, hey. Yeah. What are you doing that I'm not, you know, and how, no, can, I my, help this, how can I help this kid be yeah. successful? My dad had like photo albums of like other parks landscaping and like, you know, how can we make our park better? Oh, and like, yes. like, oh, interesting. That's how they do their food lines. Oh, maybe we should do it that way. Stuff like that. That's incredible because that's exactly how I've managed to stay fresh in the field of teaching. I'm getting ready to start my 24th year. And that's I'm amazing. always, always learning from other people, you know, always getting Absolutely. better. And that's, I, I didn't realize that amusement parks did the same thing. That's pretty cool. Oh, for sure. <laughs> All right. So looking back in the coaster time traveler, what would you say is the one coaster that you've ridden that scared you the most? So I will say from what I remember, I was a pretty brave child and generally pretty like excited to ride just about any coaster I saw. The one though that I had some hesitation on would have been Sidewinder at Hershey Park. Okay. I'm actually getting ready to go to Hershey Park for the first time next week. That's going to be my uh, last big trip of the summer before I go back to work. That's awesome. I haven't been in years. I need to, once my kids get a little bit older, we'll probably have to make a trip. So what scared you about that coaster? I think it might have been just the fact that it was a boomerang. So like the coming, like the going backwards, I think really like threw me for a loop. So, mm -hmm. and I was, I saw it, I saw it outside. I was like, yes, I want to ride this. And so me and my mom got in line, we waited, we got to the station and something about it being right there in front of me. I started crying and screaming and saying, I didn't want to write it. I didn't want to write it. And my mom, my mom was like, no, you're writing this. We've waited this long. You're, you're getting in here right now. So, uh, I wrote it and then, uh, I loved it. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> Cause I've seen that go two different ways, you know, oh, sometimes, yeah. sometimes, but yeah, and I'm sure working at a music park, you see that too. Sometimes yeah, parents well, will say, no, you're going to get on this and. It's yep. not a good experience for the child, but I think it comes down to knowing your kid too. Yeah. And that's actually like, as a little side note at holiday world, anyway, we generally are not going to push parents to shove kids onto rides if they are visually not wanting to ride. Cause those are the yeah. ones that like to kind of wiggle in their seat. Mm -hmm. So 
we're going to probably say, maybe you should wait. But my mom, in this case, decided to go ahead and shove me on. You're going anyway. <laughs> it, was, it was all for the better because I loved it. I got off. I said, mm-hmm. I want to go again. And my yeah. my dad was like, okay, I'll take you. My mom had enough. <laughs> I'm glad that worked out. That's the first time that anyone has mentioned that coaster as their scariest. Usually it's top thrill drags. There's a very common one that people respond with i've heard son of beast you know a boomerang that's fat that's <laughs> answer, that's the first time i've heard that and that's one thing that's really fun though about interviewing people is i always get responses that i'm not expecting oh i mean i'm sure <laughs> uh-huh and definitely different people have different experiences on different rides I mean, you can talk mm-hmm. to the same person over and over again, like, you know, with Holiday World, I told you, I love Voyage. I've read, mm-hmm. I'll actually hit my 300th coaster next week, and Voyage is my number two overall. It's my number one wooden. Awesome. Thank and you. <laughs> I hear people, I'll never ride that thing again. It's too rough and all, you know. And then other people that love it say they can only ride it two or three times and they tap out. I can sit and ride that thing all day and I love it. But, you know, there's other coasters, too, that I hate that other people love. Mm-hmm. And it just comes, oh, definitely. Down, it comes down to a matter of preference. There's no right or wrong answers. Absolutely. I know for some people, I think the biggest hang up on Voyage is the fact that they get halfway through it and uh, right before the triple down and they're like, oh, it's over. No, 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 it's, it's, it's certainly so. not. <laughs> and then you need to come to Hot Nights at some point in your life and experience Voyage Unchained. That is, level yes, it's a that. whole other thing and then especially whenever you know it works out with the moon that there's not mm. a full moon and like it it's like pitch, pitch black, black. It's pitch black this year those are the best rides and that thing i swear i've been there this was my third hollywood nights it was running so fast i don't know how it stayed on the tracks <laughs> uh, well it's not gonna come off I, well, I know it's not <laughs> what i called an out of body experience I loved it. Just wanted to do it over and over again. Okay, so going back to your scary coaster, Sidewinder, how were you yeah. feeling that day when you approached the station? Oh, I was terrified. Because <laughs> as I said, I was like super all about it. But once I hit the station, that was the point at which fear just took over. <laughs> and when did that fear leave? Did it leave on the ride, after the ride? On the ride for sure. Okay. Because I mean, once I got, and I don't even know, like, as it was going backwards, I think I was still terrified. I think it was once it let go that I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. <laughs> There's a couple of times I can remember being really scared, but it's different how it hit me each time. Before mm-hmm. I rode my first, I guess, called Big Kid Coaster, it was Vortex at Kings Island. I was, I had a knot in my stomach, lump in my throat all the way through Mm -hmm. the station. But, you know, I grew up being told everything was scary. So I just automatically assumed it was scary. You know, it was just told that. Fair enough. Yep. And, you know, after I got off, what lies have these people been feeding me? I loved it. (laughs) You know, that was back when Vortex was running really well before, you know, it got rough when it was older, but Mm -hmm. I loved it. And, you know, then I think forward to Top Thrill Dragster, it was different. I was calm as a cucumber going through the station. And then it hit me like a ton of bricks when I sat down on the seat on the coaster. <laughs> yeah, that's when yeah. Just, I don't know that fears ever hit me that hard that fast in my life. <laughs> when I, you know, when I sat down on the seat for the first time and I realized I was actually yep. ready to go 120. <laughs> yep. Yep. So that was that and I remember the other two times when I was just scared to death was my first ride on Diamondback at Kings Island and Fury 325 down at Carowinds mm-hmm. I think I left handprints in the restraints <laughs> couldn't let go <laughs> oh my goodness it took me over a year to finally put my hands up on the drop of Diamondback and Fury the oh whole really first, oh yeah the whole first trip on Fury back in 2019 I didn't like go on the drop one time. So when we finally went back last year and we went back for another trip this year, 
that was the first thing I did. I'm like, I've got to ride Fury right because I've never <laughs> experienced the ride. Now I'm ready. But, um, you know, I've that's awesome. That a few times. And that, that's the thing. I got mad at myself after I really started to experience more. Why'd you do that? We're going to go oh, back to that. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so when you got off of the coaster, Sidewinder, for the first time, how were you feeling when you got off? Oh, I was so pumped. (laughs) I was so excited. I loved every second of it. Uh, I wanted to go again. Mm -hmm. Uh, So my my mom said, nope, I'm not doing it again. That was that was a little too traumatic for me. So uh, my but my dad said, I'll go. So I did get to ride again. Yeah, that was like me when I got off of Dragster. I was literally screaming and cheering that I did it, but I was mad at myself because everybody else put their hands up on the launch and I didn't. And I kept, I'm just, me being me, I kept riding it until I could get my hands up on the launch. It took five times. And then after I did it, I did it again <laughs> to make sure. But the next time we returned to Cedar Point, I would be comfortable doing so. And it it worked out perfectly. That's great. That's I get motivated when I watch other people. I took it as a challenge. I'm like, why can't I do that? I'm going to do that. And I'm not leaving until I do. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm glad I did that too, because now looking at the uncertain fate of the ride, I don't know if we'll get to ride again or not. So would you say after writing Sidewinder that it had any type of impact on your life? Um, I think that, uh, I mean, I said, like, I was always pretty, like, you know, down to try any roller coaster whenever I was a young kid. And like, but having that fear, I think I did have fear, but I overcame it. So I think that kind of showed me like, hey, just, you know, you can do it. Like if you were able to get up the courage to ride this, like you can, you can ride any ride. So I think it just kind of gave me that extra courage boost to not be afraid of any coaster, yes. at least as a kid. <laughs> and I found, I found through my own, you know, fear facing and fear conquering. It's not that you, that you can just ride anything. You can really accomplish anything in any area of life. Oh, absolutely. Decide to. It's mm-hmm. a, it's amazing the impacts that facing fear has because you finally it's just kind of like a wake up call that it's all in your head and there, <laughs> yep. there's lots of other things all in your head you know one thing that riding coasters has motivated me to do three years ago I was 245 pounds I was in almost a size 26 pants. I'm now, I'm now 125 pounds in a size four. You're a small person. Yeah. And it took almost three years to get. That's incredible. My weight goal. But I was about 10 pounds away from not even being able to fit on the B&Ms. I couldn't fit Thunderbird at Holiday World. There were several rides I already couldn't fit. And, you know, just once I got into this crazy hobby, I was going to drag into it begrudgingly by my son at first but <laughs> was the best thing that ever happened to me brought me back to life made me want to get healthy you know so I could, awesome. I could fit on the rides and have fun and you know being that overweight I had a lot of pain in my feet and my knees oh, I was sure. literally limping around the parks even when we went it was just not a fun mm-hmm. experience because I was always in pain and it's all gone now and that's great it keeps me wanting to stay fit and stay healthy so I can do what I love. Absolutely. You know, it's all, it's all in the head. Eating, confidence, any, you know, anything you want to do, just tie it, for me, it ties back to roller coasters. <laughs> and people are like, why do you, why do you ride like this? Because I've just seen so many different impacts across the board mm-hmm. that it has. I want to keep doing it. Okay, so think going back into the coaster time capsule, what would you say has been your craziest moment on a coaster or, you know, waiting for a coaster or in an amusement park? Oh, my goodness. Well, I mean, 
growing up in an amusement park, I, I mean, I'm definitely, I have stories of like doing commercial shoots and, you know, riding coasters all day long. Yeah. But I think I would have to say like my craziest moment is probably like what almost anti-crazy only because uh, shortly after we opened Thunderbird, um, the show Thrill Factor came and did an episode. I don't know if you had ever seen Thrill Factor. It was a, a show with two of the assistants from Mythbusters mm-hmm. and they went around to different amusement parks and kind of like tested out random hypotheses about uh, amusement park rides. And mm-hmm. so while they were here, they were testing to see whenever riding roller coasters, who keeps their cool better, men or women. So basically who is able to like have a lower heart rate while riding the coaster. Uh, they wanted to see, you know, whose heart rates like skyrocketed. <laughs> and so I got to be on uh, the women's team and I, I really wanted to make sure that the women stayed cool and calm. Uh, and so we were sitting there, wait, they were filming some other stuff and we were just strapped in and waiting uh, to take off. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know how I did it, but I just got so calm and relaxed and I rode Thunderbird like the most relaxed way I've ever ridden it in my life. Like uh-huh. I can't even explain it. Like there was no like need to scream. Like there, it was just like my stomach didn't even do any flips. I was mm-hmm. just like, so like Zen about it. And yeah. yeah, it was just a weird, crazy, but almost anti-crazy mm-hmm. <laughs> moment because it was just so low. And in the end, uh, the women were able to keep their cool better than men. So <laughs> I wish I could have ridden with you all. My son taught me two years ago. That's how I ride Thunderbird all the time. Now I ride what we call zombie style. When we launch, you have your hands and feet out. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Out yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> and just ride the whole way like that. And you literally just feel like a bird flying. Yes. It's so freeing. And for I love me, that ride. it's so <laughs> thrilling, but so relaxing. Mm hmm. I could ride it again and again and again. I've been on all the wing coasters and it's my favorite by far. Thank you. I love Thunderbird. And that seems to be the consensus of most of my friends. Not all. There's a few people out of the box, <laughs> but at most. All right. So out of all of the coasters you've ridden, what would you say is your favorite coaster? Uh, well, I work at Holiday World, so I think it's going to have to be a Holiday World coaster, but I don't know. It, it may have to be a tie because I don't know if you've dug into our past a whole bunch, but a few years ago, um, my sister wrote a pod, uh, not podcast, sorry, a blog post about the legend is her sister coaster. And thus was born this legend of sister coasters for me and my siblings and the three wooden coasters that we have. Mm-hmm. So therefore Raven is my sister coaster as the oldest. So okay. therefore I have a, I have a big old spot in my heart for Raven, but I also really, really love Thunderbird. So, and I had a big hand in helping to design the coaster in the area. So I have to say both. <laughs> And there's not a bad choice <laughs> either or between the two of them. They're both wonderful. And yes, um, Leah did share with me the story about behind the sister, the sister coaster. coasters. When we did the interview, I was just fascinated. I never <laughs> realized, you know, that there was really that strong of a family connection with the coasters to the park and it the, probably wasn't intentional, but yes. I mean, we can very easily kind of equate it to each other. Cause mm-hmm. I'm sure like the most obvious one is like just the length and our heights as yes. people, cause I am the shortest in our family. And then there's Leah and then William is six, four. So William See, I didn't even realize the there was a height correlation so, too. <laughs> we like to say that's one of the things okay. that, yeah, like our, so like as I'm, I'm the shortest and Raven has the shortest you know, duration. Sense. And then Leah's taller than me and legend's a little bit longer. And then, yeah, William okay. is six, four and veg- voyage is way longer. So okay. That's awesome. yeah, then we can, we can also, if we really want to, we can dive into kind of some personality traits of the coasters and equate them back to ourselves. <laughs> We've yeah, been she, able to do it. She did discuss that with me. 
and the whole story of how Thunderbird came to be when the connection with your father and all of that she told she mm-hmm. shared all of that with me and it just makes me love the park even more when I go now because <laughs> I walk through and you know, I actually think about that now you know awesome I, you see the coasters and not just that, that, that it's a family business but the family connections with the rides and stuff it just gives it a whole other level of nostalgia now when I visit we probably put maybe a little too much heart into everything we do but hopefully people get at least a little bit of it whenever they're here I appreciate you all sharing that with me. <laughs> so with Thunderbird and Raven being your favorite coasters, what would you say is the least favorite coaster you've ridden? So I don't want to like, you know, call out any parks yeah, or anything like absolutely. that. Cause I mean, we're, it's a very friendly business, yes. but so I will say probably my least favorite riding experience mm-hmm. would have to have been on vortex at king's island i did write it in the later years yes. and it was a bit too much for me so vortex that's, was yeah that's a very nostalgic coaster for me absolutely and that's, i greatly i, I greatly mm-hmm. respect the history of that coaster and I mean, i'm sure it was a great ride back whenever it was first put in but the last time i wrote it, <laughs> it was a head banger at the end it was it really was <laughs> Yeah, it, that was my first big kid coaster, and it was my kids' first coaster with inversions. I mean, it had, you know, really oh, that's awesome. had a nice little attachment to the heartstrings, but yes, it ran beautifully in its younger years, but uh, mm-hmm. it did not age well, and there's not a lot of people that I know that would argue with that, as my, and, and they loved it too, but absolutely yeah. yeah it was definitely hard and I think a lot of it had to do with height taller people didn't mm-hmm. seem to have a problem with the head banging because the head would you know your head would come out of restraints oh uh-huh for me I it became an experience where I you know I would do it when the kids wanted to do it which would be more <laughs> than enough. I wanted to do it towards the end <laughs> but I'd do it anyway but I was still somewhat bittersweet to see it go you know because of the memories that were attached to it so also mm-hmm. i'm also very excited though to see what's going to take its place eventually okay so now we're going to switch to the part of the interview where we fast forward you know to here and now we're going to talk more about you as opposed mm-hmm. to just coasters tell me about your experience being raised in an amusement park like what kind of work or things did you do did you enjoy it or did you want to go do other things um so growing up here was definitely different although I would say I don't know that I thoroughly realized that things were super different until I was a little bit older uh and then I was able to you know talk with other people and realize oh that's just going to a theme park whenever it's closed that's not normal. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, me and Leah, I will say got to have some really cool birthdays growing up. Uh, the park would be closed. We'd come in, eat pizza, and then we'd go play ski ball with our friends. Like, yes, I know it's okay. very low thrills, but at the time we thought it was big stuff. Um, you thought it was so, everything, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So, I mean, getting to have birthdays like that was, you know, we thought we were mm-hmm. super cool. Um, but I'm trying to think through everything you just said um but yeah growing up um I've worked in different areas in the park um cash control entertainment um but honestly while I was growing up I didn't really think that I wanted to work here full-time I thought that that was for my dad and my sister and I would stay away and go do something else okay did, what other things were you interested in at the time? Um, I actually went to school um, at Florida State. Um, I, I wanted to get far away from Indiana, so I went to Florida for school, and I went for retail merchandising, and I thought I was going to, you know, maybe be in retail management somewhere um, further away from home, maybe, but not too far, maybe Nashville, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, that was 
that was like my plan. And then whenever my dad passed away in 2010, that kind of changed everything. Cause then it wasn't okay. like, Oh, like, you know, the parks in his hands anymore. Uh, so it was, it was suddenly in my hands. Okay. So that's whenever I decided that, uh, I wanted to come back and help to continue his legacy. Awesome. Okay. So now talk with me about the various roles you've had at holiday world over the years. Like what does your current job entail and what's your favorite mm-hmm. role been at the park? Um, so as like a 14, 15 year old, uh, well, then once I got to be 16, I worked in cash control and entertainment. I got to be in the stage shows, uh, whenever I was in high school. Um, Fun. I love doing that. Yeah. And then whenever I came back from college, I actually took on the seasonal manager of entertainment. Um, but I was also hired on full time um, and given the title of director of theming. Okay. Um, and so basically that was our big shift uh, whenever we decided to really start focusing on, you know, what colors are we painting things and like what story are we trying to tell with this attraction? Uh, I was the one who kind of helped point us into that direction. Okay. Um, and then from there, I ended up uh, taking on the director of entertainment and events position. And so I'm over all of our special events at the park as well as our entertainment. So uh, Hall Dog and all of his friends, I get to see on the daily as well as Santa Claus himself uh, works with me. Okay. And then obviously on top of all of that, uh, I'm a fourth generation owner of the park and on the, I'm on the board of directors. So, you know, I, I do, I do just a few things. Sounds like you work a little bit, but have a lot of fun too. Oh, absolutely. You said you were in stage shows. Do you sing? Do you dance? What do you do? I do. Growing up, uh, I was in dance classes from the age of three. Um, but yeah, our mom, uh, raised us singing and dancing. And so Lee and I both, uh, did a few summers and stage shows. So, and, uh, back, I guess almost five years ago now, five, six years ago, we, Leah and I and William, uh, we actually produced our Halloween show for two years. Um, and wow. we, <laughs> it was an endeavor. We can do it. We just, we have to have the time to do it and we don't always uh-huh. have the time to do it. Um, but we had some people who had, uh, scheduling conflicts and couldn't be there for every day of the run. So, Lee and I actually took turns hopping into the show as like full grown adults in our Halloween show. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's awesome. Yeah. So reminds me of my bosses that I work with at work. You know, they're not one like my principal, she's not one that sits in the office and tells everybody what to do. I mean, she's in the classroom with us. Uh-huh. And the best leaders are there you know, they're, they're working with the employees that work for them. They're not standing above Mm -hmm. them. So that's just incredible that you all were willing to just jump right in. (laughs) I mean, we, we, we do our best. (laughs) Yep. And I'm sure your employees were very thankful for that. Those in the cast. Yeah. I I, honestly, we may have done it a little too undercover. I don't know that really many other people realized what we were doing. Yeah. Well, that too may have become a bit of a distraction during the performance. So probably, probably for the best that they didn't. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So I know you've talked about a lot about entertainment and that sort of thing that you're in charge Mm -hmm. of. What are some of the special events that Holiday World has each year and what kinds of activities are included in those events? Oh my goodness. I could probably go like on and on. Um, So We have, I guess I'll start with maybe some of our bigger events and work a little smaller. Um, So about mm, six weekends from about mid-September through the end of October, we have our Happy Halloween Weekends uh, event, and that's family-friendly Halloween. Um, We have special entertainment. Um, The water park's closed during that time, so it's just the dry park, Um, but we have special houses that we put up that you can walk through. Again, it's not scary. There are a few startles, but it's all family friendly. Kids okay. are 
welcome to come through. Um, we have a trick or treat trail where we'll, we give out candy to kids. Um, we have a, a hay ride and a corn maze. We actually just released photos recently of our the, the corn maze design for this year. Um, yeah, so that's kind of, and there's lots and lots of special food during Halloween. That's probably might be my favorite part. Okay. <laughs> and then actually right before Happy Halloween weekends, the five weekends leading up to that, we have what we, uh, what we call Kids World. So that runs five weekends from about mid-August through mid-September. Um, and that one is more of just kind of an overlay on the park. So the park is still open and operates as normal. The water park is still open. Um, we just have some fun extra stuff for kids. So like all of our entertainment uh, switches and it's geared more so for kids. Um, we have a bubble zone where you can go and just play with lots of bubbles and bubbles everywhere. Uh, we have a, a percussion zone where we have uh, lots of instruments that kids can just bang on and make a lot of noise. Um, lots of special little treats around the, the park. We've got some balloons everywhere. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of kids world in a nutshell. Um, and then I'm trying to remember everything else we do. Uh, so we have any fireworks shows that we do throughout the year, those fall under events. Um, so in the past, it's been uh, Friday Night Fireworks. Mm -hmm. um, this year, it's Holidays of the Sky, our fireworks and drone show. Um, who knows what it'll be next year? <laughs> it's still to be determined. Um, that falls under events. Um, then moving a little bit smaller from that, we obviously... Our team takes care of Hollywood nights, uh, which might be the funnest part. That um, is the biggest event that I look forward to every <laughs> year. And I, I really hope to well, get, thanks. I hope to get to come every year as long as I have a body that will, and the health that will allow me to ride boards like that. I love it. Awesome. Yeah, we, we enjoy it. We, we put way too much time into it probably I don't know me and Amanda uh, Amanda is my man my full-time manager she's my right hand oh my gosh she does so much for me um but me and Amanda sit down and we go through every little detail I mean the event this every year, year was so well done thank you every year we painstakingly go to the foods team and we say you can't take take out the tots the tots will stay <laughs> I'm very very opinionated about the tater tots yeah. I told a friend, I told my friend that I was actually at Holiday World with yesterday. He hasn't gotten to go to Hollywood Nights yet and he really wants to. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, if I ever don't get to go, I don't think you'll see me the whole summer. <laughs> I'm going to be <laughs> in a very sad state. It's something I just oh, no. I, I'm a school teacher. It's right after school's out. It keeps mm -hmm. me excited and motivated during a very difficult time in the school year, you know, particularly from spring break on, kids just get a little <laughs> antsy. Nah. And I just have that countdown going to Hollywood nights. <laughs> I'm gonna get to have fun and here's when it's happening. I can do this. You know, it, it keeps a, a fire lit in my soul. So well, can, it's definitely a fun one to plan. It's definitely very different from, you know, Halloween and kids world, you know, it's like yeah. the other end of the spectrum. Um, but yeah, Halloween nights, uh, falls under us and it's so much to fun, mm -hmm. so much fun to plan. And then uh, the past few years, what's also, um, been in our court is doing coasting for kids with give kids the world. So, yes. and we have that coming up in August this year. Mm -hmm. So we're very excited about that. I mean, I've got, so that's much pretty much all the events. <laughs> okay. I've got several friends that have participated that participated in that as well and that's for a very good cause absolutely we love we get kids in the world okay so now i want to talk about some of the things that you've managed to accomplish at holiday world over the your years at the park what are some of the things that you have accomplished at holiday world and which accomplishment would you say is your best one and why oh geez um so I would say these are pretty much all, you know, as an adult, um, but 
I already mentioned a little bit earlier, like the, the director of theming. Um, so that has, as we've moved, continued on and I've taken on other responsibilities, I'm, I've still kind of held on to that title, but more so in just that uh, whenever anything gets repainted, I get to pick out the paint color. Mm -hmm. um, so as anyone comes to the park year over year and starts to notice that things are a little brighter here, that's, that's generally my hand uh, picking out some new colors. I, oh. I enjoy like breathing fresh life into things. So, and it's, it's at least gotten to the point where no one questions me. Cause the first time I picked out some crazy colors, everyone looked at me and was like, are you, are you really sure that you want to paint that <laughs> building that color? And I said, yes, I, we need to paint it this color guys. We need to do it. Like we just need to go for it. And they're like, mm -hmm we painted it and it was a food's location and the per cap actually went up. And so now no one questions me, uh, okay. but so, yeah. So if you notice any bright colors on the park, that's generally probably my hand. So I get pretty proud, proud, proud in just seeing more color around the park. Um, but then I probably say that my biggest accomplishment at holiday world is Thunderbird. Um, okay. Me and my sister, and I mean, obviously a team of others were, were very, very heavily involved with that project. I mean, I'm sure Leah told you, obviously we started with some plans that my dad had, um, yes. but we were very involved in making sure that the layout was just so, um, I picked out all, I picked out colors for the trains. We got some input on what it should be for the track. Um, but I had to sell it to everyone else because <laughs> uh -huh. I agreed that it should be orange and everyone thought that that was a crazy color, but uh, I helped pick out so many colors up there. I picked out the colors of the concrete. Um, we, yeah, I mean, we, we had a say in so many elements that were up there. So walking up there, I just feel a real sense of accomplishment and mm -hmm. I love to go up there. It's probably my favorite place in the park. And you know, Speaking of which, and the colors tie in perfectly with this. Yesterday was the first time I've actually seen the owls. Oh, that are in Thunderbird. Yes. We have I some barred owls. Never paid attention, but I mean, they're, it's well, like they're they're, they're, they're new this the, year. They're part of the theming. They tie in with the color. That's, yeah, sure. They tie in with everything. I'm like, this they is do. perfect. And, you know, I love that you've, that you've actually, you know, you stuck with your guns and you've gone with your own ideas, even when people question them at first, because, you know, nobody ever did anything great by blending in. For sure. Yes. But, you know, ideas that are innovative and different mm -hmm. are the ones that get people's attention. And you've, you've just got to take a risk for better Absolutely. or for worse. You got to so. have the courage to make that move. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy that it's worked out in your all's favor because the park is absolutely incredible and now it's going to be even more meaningful kind of going through there and walking around and hearing your story about the colors and stuff around the park and knowing that your hand has been on that okay so what do you envision for the future of holiday world oh my goodness um for the future of Holiday World, I mean, oh, if we've learned anything with COVID, it's that, I mean, we've got to be able to adapt and willing to change our plans. Mm -hmm. um, so whatever, whatever we do, whatever is our next step story is very important to me. And I just want to make sure that we're telling a story, whether it's the story of my great grandfather starting the park and it continuing through our family and keeping the legacy alive, or just the story of, you know, Thunderbird and a farmer who finds something hidden, like out buried in his field. You know, I just, I want there to be a story and I want people to, to feel the story. Okay. And, you know, that's, like I said, just talking with you, those stories have just, you know, taken my love for that part to a whole other level. And I think, you know, it would do the same for others that haven't heard the stories if they're not familiar with them. To just well, thank you. Bring that aware, make that awareness because that makes me want to go back even more. <laughs> you know, <laughs> hearing all the stories and the connections. Okay, so we have two more questions. The next question is, you know, just thinking about other people, any type of struggle that they may be facing, 
you know, be it in life or whether it's, you know, want to face fear, ride a coaster. Could be, you know, something personal or more, you know, thriller fun based. What advice can you give to those who are listening? Um, I think I would have to say, and we actually ended up stumbling into it just a minute ago. Don't be afraid to make big moves. Bingo. Find some, whatever, yeah, whatever you got to do, find that courage to make those big moves. Um, I've made several big moves throughout my life. And if it wouldn't have been for those, I would definitely wouldn't be where mm-hmm. I am today. Being here at Holiday World, we definitely, at the end of the day, sometimes we just got to make a jump and make that big move and see where it takes us next. So, I mean, make big moves. Yep. You're never going to stand out. The public's not going to notice you definitely in this industry if you, if you blend in. <laughs> and I mean, that seems to apply for, you know, life in general. Mm-hmm. My, one of my mottos has been, you know, it's always go big or don't go. Be it for better or for worse. Sometimes things work out. Sometimes they don't, but you don't know until you try. Mm-hmm. Okay. And our final question just reg- just uh, centers around social media. Where were, are people able to find you on social media? I will tell you, I am not the most uh, social, socially active person. Okay, and that's fine. <laughs> um, Whatever you feel comfortable hand- sharing. Yeah. Oh, I man, I just don't share that much. <laughs> um, but I'm on Instagram the most, and that's at Ms. Lauren Rosalie. Okay. And I can send that to you if you want. Okie doke. Thank you for sharing that. And I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for, like I said, taking the time out of your crazy schedule to join me today. I've really enjoyed our conversation. Thank you so much for being my guest on the podcast. Thank you for having me. It's fun to to share stories and I I enjoy it whenever, you know, people get excited about hearing Mm -hmm. the things that we think are cool. It's nice to know that other people find it cool too. (laughs) I very much enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Thank you. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And if you want to see more of us, we upload every Friday. And check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all at Coaster Challenge. Links are in the description below. Thanks for joining us here today.